Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the Buff Geek here, and today we will be covering Star Wars The Last Jedi. Spoilers! So, I saw Star Wars The Last Jedi a day or so ago. Um, I went to the midnight showing, and um, gosh, it's been floating around in my head ever since. I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to, to meet with... Uh, one of the other chaps and discuss it, but it's just not going to work out right now. And I've just realised that the computer is not plugged in, so I'm just going to fiddle about real quick. Hopefully this isn't, doesn't ruin your um, listening experience. Can't find the hole though. Oh no. No, it's okay. I found it. I found it real quick actually. Expert. So, Star Wars The Last Jedi. A spoiler review, so I'm just going to get into it. I don't know. I I don't know. I I don't know. I feel like Charlotte York from Sex and the City Two, when uh, Carrie kisses Big, uh, Carrie kisses Aiden. Um. Yeah, I've been, I've, I watched that again recently. Recently, me and my girl did all the Sex and the City episodes and then both movies. When I say recently, I mean all through this year. Uh, I, I, I loved me some Sex and the City, i got to say. And back in the 90s, I, I learned a lot from watching that show for how to approach women. It was really helpful. I don't know what, what show is the equivalent today, if there is any, but... Watching that and reading some girls' magazines really helped. Uh, I don't know what the word would be. Infiltrate the, the female psyche, if you will. <coughs> and I just, I just like the show stuff. So whatever, <coughs> football stuff, cigars, beer. Um, I don't know, like. <sighs> Okay, so I watched the film, and then I stood up, and I was at the very back of the theatre, right in the centre. So I got my perfect seat, seat 18, in Perth Cinema. Um, well, it's perfect this is going to get in Perth Cinema. And everyone was kind of like, flat. There was no energy in the room. Everyone was just like... What? Like, there's a lot of cool things in the film, and there's a lot of things that I don't like, and some things I, I fundamentally disagree with. So, let's see what's good about the film to start with, shall we? What's good about the film? The scores, I mean, it's Star Wars, right? So, it's pretty good. But, the. The, the 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 main theme of it, it, it for me is really close to or well I suppose it's the other way around Rogue One's main theme is really close to um, the theme in this film, which just made me want to hear the Rogue One theme because I love Rogue One, absolutely love it. Um, uh, yeah, so the score is good. The score is definitely good. I mean, you can't you can't be upset with a Star Wars score. It's just going to work. It's not got something like Jewel of the Fates, which is kind of weird. I kind of thought that um, with this new franchise, they would have thrown out something that was just like the Jewel of the Fates is one of the best Star Wars themes. It might it might be the best. Um, it just it's so freaking good. But the score is definitely good. Do I like the cast? Well, yeah, I like Mark Hamill. Holy shit, we'll get to him. Wow. Um, obviously, Carrie Fisher being back, and yeah, a lot of the cast I like. Um, I, I still can't decide. I mean, jo John Boyega's fun. Um, Oscar Isaac definitely has that kind of impulsive hero quality to him. Benicio Del Toro, even though he's not in it that much, is good banter. He got quite a few chuckles just with his idiosyncrasies. Gwendolyn Christie sounds amazing. <clears throat> Again, poorly misused. But let's keep it on the positive. Adam Driver, I... 
I watched Force Awakens before I watched The Last Jedi. When I say before, I mean literally before. And when he takes the helmet off, I had the same reaction as I had the first time, and it was I laughed. I was like, who is this big, nerdy-looking fuck? You know? Like, this guy looks like a complete buffoon. Um, when he takes off that mask, you're like, what? This is the bad guy? This is the Vader of the film. This is the guy in all the marketing. Like, Kylo Ren was set to be a legend, I think, just from like his style, because he was kind of like Vader, but not in any way. That cross sword. Um, and then we get kind of this goofball crybaby whiner, which I know is a Skywalker trait, but... I don't know, I just... When he takes off that mask, I remember people chuckling, and I felt that same way again, so I'm not sure how I feel about that. But, I do like him, but maybe I'm just used to him? Um, He's just a bit of a whiny bitch, and... His acting's fine, but there's nothing... It doesn't, it doesn't stand out to me in any way. Um, Daisy Ridley I don't know what they did in this film if anything but man she became way more likeable I I just found her to be like every time they were doing something she was telling the other characters how it could be done and how good she was she was basically it's called a Mary Sue which means just OP for the sake of being OP and I kind of felt like it was a disingenuous choice. She was really likable in this film. And I, like, my favourite parts were just her and Mark Hamill hanging out. Mark Hamill, holy cow, he is fantastic in whatever they give him in this. And they give him some interesting stuff. He is brilliant. The emotion that he can convey with his eyes is just fantastic. And it's, uh, hopefully this doesn't come across insulting, I do not mean it to be that way, but what a waste to have him hidden behind a cartoon. I know he's a very accomplished voice actor, but what a waste when he can convey that much emotion, that much rage, anger, ang anger vulnerability, like... Wow. Just to think that basically, I mean, I know he's a successful voice actor now, but it used to be a joke in the 90s how he was like a failure. Kind of like how people would maybe joke. Well, I suppose maybe it is a little bit more. Anyway, um, they would like, no one, no one went on to do anything apart from Harrison Ford from the Star Wars films. Really. And that Mark Hamill was bitter and he hated Harrison Ford and there's all these rumours that went around and whether that was true or not, you know, that's besides the point. The fact is, is that he was considered to be a failure and then like, a little bit of good trivia was always that he was the voice of the Joker in Batman. You kind of thought, oh, maybe he's making a little bit of coin and it seems to be that he's been doing okay for himself with lots of voice work all this time and he is the, if anything, he is the Joker. The, the iconic voice of the Joker. So, it's kind of weird to think, why were studios not hiring this guy? Like, And that was the problem previously as well. When I was growing up in the, in the 80s and 90s and maybe before that and even a little bit after, is that if you did one of these big budget franchise films, you might only be see might only be seen as Luke Skywalker which is why, one of the reasons why Leonardo DiCaprio turned in the role of Peter Parker originally, because he didn't want to always be seen as Spider-Man, and that was savvy of him because he was at a point where he was so popular and so famous and all the girls loved him that he had to stay away from anything that could be considered big franchise, cookie cutter he had to go gritty all the way and that's why um I think, personally, that he's passed up on those sort of roles. Roles that probably would have paid a lot of money and probably would have been very fun. I mean, I can't imagine he wouldn't want to be Spider-Man. I mean, who wouldn't want to be Spider-Man? Uh, I mean, if someone asked me to do it, I'm not saying that it's my number one choice in comic book heroes 
and I also think I'd be the wrong choice because I'm too big, but if they wanted to pay me to be Spider-Man, fuck yeah, and you would do it too. So, um, yeah, I think that he probably had to have, he was probably maybe thought of by studios as, well, that's Luke Skywalker, but then surely Harrison Ford was Han Solo, so I, I don't know. Whatever the reason was, I feel like he's been given a bad hand for a lot of years there, and it's a so pleased for Mark Hamill personally to be able to come back to Star Wars, put in that performance, absolutely kill it, and because I didn't like Daisy Ridley, I'm not sure if I will like Daisy Ridley, Daisy Ridley's character of Rey in the third one, without Mark Hamill being there, because there's just something about him. He was just fucking hilarious. Um. Yeah, yeah, let's keep on the positives. The imagery of the film, the CGI, was just about flawless. Um, the practical and... The mix of practical and CGI is just is just the right way to go. It's, the prequels do look a little bit more like a computer game, especially the older they get. Um, but the prequels are still kind of my Star Wars, because I was still kind of a teenager at the time when they came out. Excuse me. So I was I was pretty. But I was always I was. I couldn't believe it, when I was a teenager and those came out. So for me, that that they're all my Star Wars, really. And that's how I feel about them. Maybe because I'm a big kid at heart, but, or, not even at heart. Just, come, just obviously a big kid. But <sighs> what else is really good about it? Hmm. Snoke's ship, which I can't, I, the name for uh, the name escapes me. The 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 dreadnought was quite cool. Um, I mean, all the most of the imagery was was really really nice. But there's a lot of problems with the film. Um, let's start with John Boyega and Kelly Marie Tran. Hopefully, I'm getting her name right. Their arc was kind of, I don't know, I just don't think that you needed to have it in it. It felt almost like, well, I need something for these characters to do, so let's put this in. I don't know if, or more to the point, I think we need something for John Boyega to do. What's he going to go away and do? I don't feel like it was very necessary to the plot. And the whole bit on the different planet, um like the gambling planet. It didn't seem like it fit with the rest of the film, with the tonality of the film. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I really didn't care about that part. John Boyega's funny and stuff, but I'm sure he could have been funny somewhere else. Also, the fact that no one decides to talk about, um, you know, how... We all thought he was maybe going to be paralysed um, as a big deal to get sliced up the spine with a lightsaber. No one, I, I don't think anyone mentions it at all. I mean, obviously he comes out of the... Well, he's not even in a back tank. He's in some weird plastic suit. But I was just... I don't know. I, was, I don't know what they were thinking of about him. But I think someone wrote the script and then forgot about John Boyega and thought, how are we going to... I mean, at the end, when he's flying into the laser cannon... I was like, oh no, Finn's going to die. I like Finn. And I do like Finn. I really like Finn. But he just didn't seem to have anything to do in this film until just that end piece there. Um, yeah. I, if they cut that bit out of the film and just had him maybe uh, maybe just out of action for most of the film and then came in at the end you probably we would made the film a little bit tighter and possibly a little bit better with pacing because I was kind of like, this is taking off a long time. The whole ship scene, ship chasing, ship scene was it's just... I understand it. It just seems a little bit boring. Like, they're a little bit faster than you so they're just going to stay slightly ahead of you for just hours and hours and hours. That's not exciting. I, 
I wasn't. I didn't like that. And just watching the two ships moving along slowly was really hard to grasp. Like, why can't you just use a little bit of light speed and just get there closer, or send some other faster ships, like get one of the Imperial Star, Destroy Star Destroyers, which they might not be called that now. Um, I can't remember. I'm not so good with uh, things. Well, with the names of the ships and stuff like that from Force Awakens onwards, I must admit. Um, OT and backwards, yo. Um, actually, just get one of them to turn up from hyperspace and then just shoot it down. Like, job done, right? I mean, yeah, I didn't like that. The opening scene with the dreadnought just standing there taking all the damage. I'm not quite sure why the other Star Destroyers didn't get involved. They just hang, they just hung back and let that ship take all the damage and get blown up, basically. Where they could have came in and why didn't they shoot at Leia's ship? That makes no sense, right? I mean, maybe it was a reason? Was it out of range? Or they couldn't get to it? Why didn't Leia's ship take it? I don't know. I don't know. That didn't seem to make sense to me either. It didn't add up. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure it's just not that I'm not getting it. I'm pretty sure it just doesn't make sense. Um, I've went, uh, yeah, I've went into the things that I really dislike. Um... I don't like the Mary Poppins bit with Carrie Fisher, with 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 Leia. I do not like it. It looked. I want to believe that they did their research, and that's exactly how it would look if someone was able to fly through space. It would just look that way. But I thought it looked awful. Um, I I know in the expanded universe she gets she she did, can develop her powers and. In theory, she might have become very powerful when Luke's been away, but that's never been exhibited to us or told to us. Could have been, there could have been a little bit of something shown to us prior to that, as opposed to her just oh, she just flies out of nowhere. Fuck. Well, why is that? Like, if someone who doesn't who doesn't know the, f the franchise has got to ask why, then that's a and someone who knows the franchise has got to ask why. More to the point, that's a problem. Like, she's never done that before. That's weird. Like you need to say, like, or you need to hover, exhibit something earlier on. So I did not like that, and that was the perfect moment. Like, obviously, we all know that Carrie Fisher passed away last Christmas, and that sucked. Um, because well, that's obviously always a sad thing when someone passes away, but that's our princess, you know, and. I don't know if I was doing if I was making this film and I knew that I couldn't have her in the third film and that they said they weren't going to use X, Y, and Z ways of putting her in the film, maybe they'd replace her or maybe not. I don't want her replaced. I would rather they just reshot it and had her die there. I think that would have been better because I was like, oh, Leia's out, but that's kind of cool because then. Luke will feel it, and then he's going to really be pushed to go and do something. Right, I like that because it should. It shouldn't be that Carrie, that, that that Princess Leia is the one that outlives Han and Luke. It just shouldn't. Han going out first, fine. I think Leia should have been second, and Luke goes out in the third one. Maybe because people guessed that would maybe assume that. I don't know. They want to do the opposite, but no, no, it wasn't right. It wasn't they should have taken her out there. Um, and that would have been like holy fuck she's gone you know but the way that she was floating in space was quite peaceful so it would have been quite nice so I don't know how they're going to do it later they've given themselves a bigger job later on I think and obviously I'm talking about a film that is technically three films long so I'm talking about the middle of a film saying I didn't like this bit and this bit when I don't know how it's going to develop in the future so maybe all that's going to change, I'm going to go, oh my god, I'm so smart they did this. I didn't like the Mary Poppins bit, though, i got to say. Um, what else? The humour was quite forced sometimes, I felt like, and a little too Marvel-tastic. Like, that bit at the start when Oscar Isaacs is making fun of Hux. Like, <sighs> it took away the gravity of the situation, took away that seriousness. Like, I only did it a little bit with Kylo Ren in the first film. I didn't like it then either. I don't... It, 
it feels out of place. It doesn't fit with the Star Wars humour. Um, it feels written by someone. As opposed to just part of the film. Didn't like that. Gwendolyn Christie's Captain Phasma. It's just been a bit of a letdown, really, overall. Laura Dern's character. I can't remember her character's name, actually. But... Out of nowhere, she's she's this leader. That's, that's okay. And she's kind of a heel for ages. And then suddenly, she kind of does something really heroic. And, and she basically... You decide that she's okay because Leia said she's okay. But then they kill her off and she sends Leia away. Surely that was the time for Leia to stay in the ship. No? Because you're trying to introduce the new characters. It's like they they tried... There's two points when Leia could have went and probably should have, especially considering, you know, the whole out with the old, in with the new BS that Kylo Ren kept on talking about. And they didn't go with it. Like, when Laura Dern was there, I was like, okay, right, she's she's going to be supplanting um, Princess Leia. This makes sense. Maybe she's in a coma for a while, and then whatever, you know. That didn't happen either. I, I just, <sighs> Ugh, okay. The Maz Kanata bit was odd. I still don't know why the lightsaber, how she got the lightsaber. Maybe we find out in the third one. Should be. The lightsaber scene with Luke throwing it seemed more like a blooper than an actual real scene. He should have just said, it's not mine. And floated it back to her. Like him throwing it over his shoulder. We waited two years for that. That's fucking weird. And it's uncomfortable. It's like funny but uncomfortable. Um, and this is my opinion, obviously... But this is what I was feeling from everyone else in the cinema at the time. Uh, I, those fish creatures on Luke's planet were too Star Trek-like. And by that I mean wearing the same uniform and they looked too much like just fish. Not enough thought put into them. And I, apart from a little bit of maybe apart from maybe the Wookiees George Lucas managed to make characters look alien as opposed to oh those are mutant fish I didn't like the way they looked either I feel like I'm shitting on all the films I've seen recently but oh well <laughs> go back and listen to the Logan review or the Thor review I like those honestly I don't just hate film um, or modern film or different films um, I don't know Donald Gleason's character of General Hux brilliant in this but kind of became a comedic version of himself not not quite the same character that he was in the first one doesn't quite fit for me um, CGI Yoda <sighs> Didn't, that was one of the things that didn't look right. Yoda and Snoke for me. Snoke looked like a big pink CGI blob. And Yoda... I don't know, maybe it's weird because he, it was the puppet then CGI'd on top of it. But they might, I would rather they just use the puppet as opposed to a CGI mapping of the puppet or the CGI version. Either the Episode 1, 2, and 3 version, or the episode 5 and 6 version. I would rather that. Um, but somewhere, using both of them didn't look... It's, it's kind of like there's three different looking versions of Yoda. It handled two. Well, actually, there is three, because the first version of Yoda was a puppet in episode 1, which is the version I've got, but I've, I... I've not seen the other version, so there's actually three versions of Yoda, technically. I know. But, <sighs> I mean, I th they had a Yoda come in so they could burn the Jedi temple. Not the temple, the, well, I suppose it would be a rudimentary temple. 
some sort. Because if Luke did it, he would come across as a heel. <coughs> Excuse me. But Yoda doing it, Yoda can basically get away with anything. I mean, this this film felt really like wrestling in the late nineties, like just swerving for the sake of swerving. Um, killing off, like, killing off Snoke. So you you basically have Snoke come out, and everyone's like, "Who is this guy? What's his deal?" And he's literally nobody. I know nothing more about him than I did in the first film. So two years of waiting to find out, like even just a little something about who he is, no, don't know. I don't want to wait another two years for that. I should have known that now with new questions, you know. And there's been a, a few rumblings about him being more powerful than Palpatine. Bullshit. And that's I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. But for him to even suggest that he's more like for. Sorry, what Andy Saga said in an interview, but I'm sure he was just saying it to mug people off, saying he's more powerful than the Emperor. Maybe wealthier, which I think is hard to do because the Emperor was, well, yeah, in charge of government. Um, but what a way just to, I'm like, nah, they're not going to kill him off. And then he gets sliced in half and he, and he drops and you're like, what the fuck? Like, you're looking at him thinking, or I'm looking at him thinking, he's going to get up. He's okay. Oh, he's dead. Right. Okay. Oh, the Knights of Ren? Dead too. Well, no, they're not the Knights of Ren. They're the Praetorian Guard. I know that. Um, where are the Knights of Ren? I don't know. I've not seen them. Maybe they come in the third film. But, uh, I don't know. It's just weird, right? <clears throat> Everyone I've spoken to about it. All the critics that are online that I've heard talk about it in a non-spoiler fashion, because everyone's not putting their spoiler reviews out, they probably are doing it now, have said that they liked it. But everyone I've spoken to personally has been like, that's weird, right? I don't get this, I don't get that, that's kind of weird. Killing off Luke Skywalker... Without him going out swinging. Is not what I like. And it might be a case that they didn't want it to seem like any other Star Wars film. Like let's give them something completely new. Everything's different. Whatever they expect let's give them the opposite of that. Okay. I get that. But what did he die of exhaustion? What a pussy way to go out. Luke Skywalker, who in the comic books or the graphic novels or in the expanded universe became so ungodly powerful. And there is a canon novel which is basically stories about the main characters by people who saw it. So not by them and not first hand account, people that saw it and they basically said, I think in one of them, um, Luke took down a Star Destroyer. Um, I could be wrong, it was maybe just a, it was maybe just a smaller fleet. The British took down a Star Destroyer, much like uh, Starkiller does, and I believe the Emperor took down some big ship before in the Expanded Universe, or maybe multiple ships. If, if that is the case, and Luke did do that, for him to... like Okay, so projecting your astral form that distance across the galaxy, yeah, it would take a lot of power. Absolutely, yeah, but... To die from it? To die from that effort? Just... <sighs> seemed a bit weak. Like, when I was looking at the two sons, I thought, oh, that's kind of cool, just like in the first... What? Did they just kill Luke? Eh? Without giving him an, a, li a lightsaber fight? I suppose it's a way for... Luke is so powerful because he would absolutely crush Kylo Ren or Daisy Ridley, or sorry, Rey, if they fought. So they needed to make sure they never fought anyone because he would just whoop their ass. But to go out like that? Nah. But again, no, no one called it. 
no one called it. And then the whole the whole Ray Kylo Ren thing. I'm digging that, but it seems kind of like Kylo and Ray might have some sort of connection there. And I, I mean, like they might become it might become a romantic thing. But at the same time, she's a lot more receptive to Finn than I thought she'd be. And Finn blatantly just worships the ground she walks on. So that's that's cool. I'm I'm liking Ray and Kylo Ren. But I don't I don't get what the scene was in the in the the cave, and she had multiple versions of her. What does what does that even mean? And the clicking of the fingers. I I think they just did that for the sake of it. I don't understand the meaning for it. Um, her looking at herself. She's asking who her parents are, and herself appears, and you think, okay. It's because she knows. Fine. She actually knows, and it happens that... Who are your parents? No one. Move on. So we had two years for no one, move on. And we waited. We're still waiting to find out who Snoke is, and I don't think we're going to get told who he is. Maybe in the expanded universe? But people that... Um, no, maybe maybe in the, the... I'm getting mixed up with the names of the comic. Or the, 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 yeah, expanded universe, right? Yeah, um, maybe in that, maybe in the graphic novels, but I, I don't even read the damn things. I read reviews in them because I don't read. I listen to stuff. If you're listening to this, I'm not saying you don't read, but chances are you probably just listen to stuff, right, and watch stuff. So, who the fuck is Snoke, and why was why were you why was it teased? Was it teased or was it us? Just us. Hmm. Anyway, the whole scene where she's clicking her fingers was was not <clears throat> was just weird. However, when she's standing in front of the mirror and there's someone walking towards her, did you not think it was Anakin? I thought it was Hayden Christensen, and I was like, oh my god, my theory is going to be correct because I had this theory that Daisy Ridley, sorry, Ray was the real Leia, and she was um, put on stasis or um, was frozen in carbonite or probably not that because that's too too violent a thing for a, a child to go through but put on stasis and hidden away as the final hope and that she was actually Mark, sorry, Luke Skywalker's sister. I've got this whole theory on it. It's like, it's maybe like the last episode before this one or two episodes before it, 181 I think it is. And um, I covered all the plot holes that you think you could have. But do you know what? It's damn, damn right more exciting than what was what was what happened and also nothing that no one else called. And, um, uh, I don't know. The, the, the look scene at the end, I was like, oh my god, why would he go cut his hair and dye his beard and trim it? Like, everyone's in peril. Does he need to go and do the, the costume change and try and make himself look younger? That's, but thankfully he was just doing that as a projection because that's how Kylo Ren would remember him as opposed to this frail old man. Even though he didn't come across as fairly, he looked like fucking cool as shit. Um, the beard dye was a little bit heavy, a little bit heavy on the beard dye. When you when you when you when you dye the beard, you got to leave. Um, you got to make sure you don't go too dark. Go a little bit lighter, otherwise it does come across as dyed. Um, okay, so Luke Luke attacking Kylo Ren in his sleep sort of was interesting. Um, <sighs> couple of things that I did like was well, that was one of them um, and I'll tell you why because it's all about your point of view okay so from Mark from Luke Skywalker's point of view he was standing above Kylo Ren and then Kylo attacked him and destroyed the Jedi Temple and then that's fleshed out a little bit more by Kylo. You find out that, okay, so I woke up and my master's about to kill me in my sleep. And he's my uncle as well. So I defend myself and attack him. And then you see the other version, the third version, which is the fully fleshed out version by Luke. Which I think is what actually happened is that he thought about stopping him. And at that moment 
after pausing and going, do you know what? Why would you do this? Kylo wakes up, picks up the lightsaber, looks like No has to defend himself, although from Kylo's perspective. So they both have something happened that fucked up everything. And it's Kylo Ren's point of view. Now, unless Luke Skywalker was lying, but I don't think he was, he was considering it, maybe a dick move, but he was considering it. And then Kylo Ren's point of view, he woke up at the wrong moment. If he'd woken up 30 seconds later, the lightsaber's in, everything's cool. Everything's cool. Jedi Temple don't get fucked up. Snoke could be talking to him, but, you know, whatever. So we need to find out who Snoke is, because they, they made him pretty, pretty cool. And I was digging it. But, and I'm kind of glad they did get rid of him in a way, because... He just if he just lasts like it's it's cool that Kylo Ren gets to be now the supreme leader because Darth Vader never got to be the Emperor and it makes a lot of sense so I really actually do like that I could have just done with having the explanation as to why Snoke was powerful who he was where he came from um, people were there's there's all these rumors and stuff I heard online and. From sources that I thought were reliable, and he didn't use um, a black kyber crystal ring, or not that I could see. I thought the power was coming from his hands. He, he wasn't a lot of things that was spoken about, and that's fine because that's all rumors, rumors and innuendo. Okay, but I could have done with an explanation as to who he was. Him getting killed off halfway through is cool, and I do like it. Um. I just don't like the fact that he never got to tell me who the fuck he was. Excuse me. Um, everything everything Luke Skywalker did in this film, um, regardless of whether I agree with it or not, and I definitely like the fact that he thought about killing Kylo Ren, because he's he's thinking in terms of I have the I have the weight of the entire galaxy on my shoulders, and I'm meant to safeguard it. And then he sees the the evil that Kylo Ren is capable of. Good. I liked Kylo Ren when he was in the shuttle, um, when he was in his um, his Tie Fighter, Tie Fighter, uh, uh, what's the word? Not extreme. Oh shit. Uh, anyway, in his Tie Fighter, and he's thinking about shooting Leia. He can sense that she's there, and he doesn't. That was cool. Um, like I said, I liked Benicio del Toro's banter. Some of the humour was good some of it really didn't work for me uh, the Porgs I really liked. They worked for me and Chewie was was was, was great fun in it <sighs> So where am I left with, with this film? I like the dynamic between Rey and Kylo Ren Oh I hate, I hate did I say I hated the fact that they broke the lightsaber in half? But I'm glad that, that Ray had it. You don't fucking break Excalibur in half. You just don't. But where does that where does this leave us? Luke being out of the picture means that okay, Luke's not coming to save anyone. No. I mean he should have. He should have came in like the hero he is. Is if he's was he that broken that he couldn't leave? Maybe he had to Maybe he realised he left it too late and had to send his astral projection there. I just don't believe that would that would off him. Hopefully, he's a force ghost in it. Hopefully. Or maybe he just transported himself somewhere else. Maybe that's another new power we don't know about. Whatever. I suppose Leia needs to have be really powerful in the force now because... I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with that. That, that worries me how they're going to work with Leia I I don't want I wouldn't want a recast I'd rather they just killed her off like, like the character you know um because that should be Carrie Fisher and, her, and Carrie Fisher's alone so that that confuses me Ray okay so her parents are nobody no one needs to ask about her parents anymore well let's get her a last name shall we let's let's figure out her last name I've heard that she's not in any any Star Wars after this trilogy so maybe her and Kylo Ren end up killing each other? Maybe? 
I still don't feel like Kyle Ren is the bad guy. And I wonder if they're doing that because... It kind of feels to me that First Order and the Alliance, although the First Order are meant to be villains and blowing up planets and the Alliance are meant to be the heroes, kind of feels like they muddied it even more in this one and it's all about a point of view, you know? And Hux is now more likeable and Kylo Ren doesn't feel like the bad guy just feels like two different sides, almost like two different political parties or two different countries arguing over whatever and depending on where you were born or what point of view you might have from a social standpoint or whatever, um, that's who your allegiance will be set to, especially with the stuff that Benicio Del Toro said. So is the First Order the enemy? I mean... Both of them, First Order and the Alliance, bought warships from the same dealer. And that's, I get that, and Star Wars does have to, like, to have a social commentary. But the same token, is that, is that where Leia's ended up? The heroic Leia Organa? I don't like to think of it that way. That that's what's happened. That's where she's ended up in all this. That her fight is not as noble as as it was in the original trilogy. And I, I kind of liked it a little bit more. These are the bad guys and these are the good guys. Like, it, from my understanding from the films and the books, fleshes out more. These are just two warring factions, almost. And yeah, the Republic is, you know, the, the Senate was destroyed in The Force Awakens. So where is their army? Huh. That's weird too. Poe Dameron, I'm sure, is going to hold Carrie Fisher in his arms when she passes because they're trying to make Poe this, I don't know, this general, this, you know, take him from just like the trigger happy hero type into more of a leader which is really on the nose but he was originally meant to die in the first one and now they've written this whole arc so if it feels like it's been forced in there or maybe like John Boyega has been forgotten about maybe that's the reason why it's so hard to comment on the middle film because you don't know where they're going with it but I've not had it. I've not read any news about where they might be going or possibilities or whatever. But <clears throat> I don't know how to score the film because I don't know how I feel about it. I think that there's loads of as much as there's lots of bits in it that I dislike. Overall, I still had a pretty, I had a good time. I want to go see it again. I will go see it again in the cinema. I'll definitely see it as soon as it comes out. Um, I want to understand it better. I don't think it's too clever for me. But I want to... I'm still so confused. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. I just disagree with lots of things, but they could be exciting... Or they could have a good payoff in the end. So I kind of want to just... I don't like it now, but I might like it later. I don't know. I'd really like to know your thoughts on it. Because... Uh, I mean, Steve's seeing it today. Hashtag it Steve. And um, I, sh I think Kev's seeing it quite soon. Uh, David doesn't give a fuck. Ian's seen it? Ian's already seen it. Hopefully next week we can all get together. Things been kind of messed up a little bit because... I don't know. Uh, I've been working more at night and the theatre was getting finished so I couldn't really do many solo podcasts during the day because it was just too much construction. Um, I was on a holiday. David's on a holiday. Steve's finishing off some... Like, everything's just went a little bit crazy recently, so... Um, it's been hard to, for us all to meet for whatever reason. Um, hopefully next week we can do a, some sort of Christmas special and a, a New Year's one as well. 
that's the plans anyway. Um, we'll just have to see how our schedules fit. But we will talk about it at some point, and we've still got to talk about Marvel, well, Disney buying Fox. That's just happened. Which, that's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. But this is about Star Wars. It's about Star Wars. I don't know how to rate it. Um, I said to my friend right now, I give it maybe like a 7, but it could go to like a 4, or it could be a 9. I need to see it again. So currently, I can't, I've not rated all of the other Star Wars films yet, because, um, well, basically, I got really busy with Alpha Fitness, and um, having managed to do all those Star Wars episodes. I've taken all the notes and I've watched them all. So it's just actually doing the podcasts on them and then rating them. So once I get to do that, I'll have a better context for this one. So by the time I actually rate them all, I've seen this one again. So it will change. But currently, I suppose I want to see it again and there's lots of cool bits in it. And I love it because it's Star Wars. So 7. 7 out of 10 for The Last Jedi. I was really thinking it was going to be like a 9. I really hoped. Just based on Mark Hamill alone, for just him being awesome, a 9.5. The fact that I like Ray now, and, and also Kylo Ren, it, yeah, maybe, yeah, bumps up a little bit, but let's just give it a 7 right now, okay? You guys have got to let me know if you like it, if you, if, if you think that they took risks and they were good risks, if you think that it doesn't feel like a Star Wars film. It felt like it felt more like a Marvel Disney film. If you think that someone, like, I don't know how, like, is JJ going to be like, what the fuck is this? This is not what I was writing. What am I going to do with this bullshit? Like, JJ did a very safe film, and this guy just went, you're up, fuck it! Like, what? What's JJ going to do in the ninth one? He's going to be fucking lost. I can't do Return of the Jedi like this. Huh. <sighs> Oh my gosh. I need to go. I'm still so confused by the whole thing. Um, If you're looking for more of our podcasts, um, well, you'll find them. You'll find them on the website at thebuffgeekpodcastblog.wordpress.com or you'll find them at The Buff Geek, which is my Twitter and my, well, not Instagram because Instagram doesn't let you tag shit, you know. But um, if you type in The Buff Geek, on whatever social media platform, you're going to find it there on the YouTube, the whole thing. I want to thank our sponsors, Alpha Fitness, um, which you might not like so much right now because that's the reason for why I've been um, not able to put out so much content. I've been working on um, some nutrition plans, nutrition and training plans with distance clients recently, so I had uh, quite a lot of that to do, which does take up a little bit of time, and uh, just, just been training folk, folk like train before Christmas because they know they're probably going to be a little bit um, eating more and a little bit lax on some occasions so however if I am quieter over the Christmas period which I it can tend to go down a little bit you might get a little cheeky extra podcast there but if you're interested in fitness training you want to put on some weight you want to lose some weight build some muscle maybe you've done a lot of training yourself but your your squat is weak or your deadlift isn't right or your, your form needs to be retooled a little bit, hit up Alpha Fitness. You'll get them through the Buff Geek Podcast blog dot wordpress dot com and all the you'll get them you'll be able to connect through the Buff Geek but also at Alpha Fitness on Twitter. Alpha Fitness one I believe it is. Anyway, that's about all we got time for. Shorter one today, but um because I'm so fucking confused. Um I don't just hate movies, like I said before, if you've watched if you've listened to this one and the Justice League one. Um, which I terribly despised go listen to Thor go listen to BVS go listen to uh, not Deadpool because I didn't like that go listen to Logan go listen to John Wick um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I can't think what else we've watched this year a whole bunch of stuff go listen to some of the older ones just you know I don't just hate stuff honest catch you soon Hashtag The Buff Geek Podcast.
I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. I only know one truth. It's time for the Jedi to end. <laughs>